Welcome to Second Tech, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Opposition to the gas fuel power ships named as preferred bidders as part of South Africa's risk mitigation power procurement program is growing. Terence Creamer joins me to explain the rising anger and what it could mean in the weeks and months ahead. Hi, Terence. Hi, Chanel. How did we land on this power ship solution? Well, after the integrated resource plan of 2019 was finally gazetted in late 2019, uh, it was clear that one of the first steps that government was meant to take was this emergency procurement um, so that we could meet a gap of between 2,000 and 3,000 megawatts in the RP, uh, a gap that Eskom estimated much larger, around 5,000 megawatts. And to do that as quickly as possible, to have found solutions that we could integrate into the grid within about 12 to 18 months after a procurement process and a financial close. So we eventually uh, took some months, but eventually launched the risk mitigation RPP program which was a so-called technology agnostic program. And it was clear from the start that the design of the program was heavily weighted in favor of a, of a power ship type solution, one that was, uh, could meet the profile uh, of, of meeting dispatchable load between five in the morning and 9.30 at night. Uh, so that met that sort of gas profile, as well as the speed uh, at which that needed to be deployed meant that it, it actually suited a, a solution such as a power ship. But the program was also for 20 years. So it had a very long life um, uh, and which is quite unlike what power ships usually uh, respond to. They're ready for emergency, almost warlike situations in a, in a, a power system. So that's really how we landed on this. We designed the program we had a competitive bidding round, which, which was launched last year, and the bids were submitted, uh, over 20 of these bids uh, in December last year. And then we had uh, the evaluation, and then we saw that three of the eight uh, solutions that were announced as preferred bidders uh, last month were these power ships. What are some of the main problems being raised with regard to the risk mitigations? Well, I think you know, there's a lot of focus on the car power ships and the fact that they're going to be docked for 20 years in Saldana Bay, Richards Bay, and Kucha. But really, it comes down to, as I was saying, the architecture of the program. It was really about putting square pegs into round holes. And I think the big problem with the program was that it was looking to have these as island-based solutions. So whether you're wind, solar, uh, uh, battery storage or a power ship, these had to operate within that uh, fire or be dispatchable load between five in the morning and 9.30 at night on their own without any recourse to the grid at existing infrastructure. So this, this was really about trying to design solutions that could meet that sort of rectangular profile, if we could call it that. So it wasn't really fit for purpose for a pure renewable solution. It had to be coupled to either gas or battery energy storage. And you actually had to overbuild uh, to, to, to meet the amount of energy you need and to get uh, and to couple that with the capacity you needed to meet that dispatchable load. So it was always going to be more expensive than it needed to be because we had this island based mentality rather than one where you could have the uh, cost lowering effect of being able to integrate into the existing assets that Eskim has in the system. So it's really an architectural design flaw with the risk mitigation. And obviously it suited the power ships uh, uh, very much. Um, and it, but we've also seen that there has been some innovation uh, around battery energy storage. The problem is we're buying a lot of battery energy storage very dear and these costs are coming down rapidly, but we are a bit do, doing what we did with the renewable bid program right at the beginning back in 2011, where we went too big too early with variable renewable energy. And we're doing the same now with, um, with battery energy storage that is coming into this program, the risk mitigation program 
for about 1,800 megawatts. We're going too big, too early. So we, we're going with massive battery energy storage solutions uh, at a time when the cost of those is still fairly dear. There are also some non-cash concerns being raised, in particular about the power ships. Yes, while all the um, programs have some sort of element of gas or diesel backup to add that capacity that need, needed to complement the energy coming from renewables, the, the non-cost elements, because uh, the cost of this program is significant, all the, all the projects are coming in much higher than they would, would, would be if it was sort of a, a using the, the individual strengths of the different technologies and integrating that with, with the network, with the grid existing assets that we have, the grid, as well as our pump storage schemes, for instance. So we're having much higher costs uh, on a uh, kilowatt hour basis than we would. And it's actually much higher than the cost that Eskom is already selling at its standard tariff of around 130 cents a kilowatt hour. These are more like in the 158 to 180 cents a kilowatt hour. So we're much more expensive than they need to be because of the design of the system. But there are also some uh, non-cost issues that are being raised by critics of the program. These are mostly environmental, you know, bringing in a fossil fuel solution in the form of a power ship for 20 years at a time when we are trying to decarbonize and look for non-fossil fuel solutions as South Africa and as the world. And, uh, you know, this is at a time when also banks are pulling back uh, quite aggressively from funding fossil fuel solutions. So that's, there's the environmental impact that are being uh, raised as concern. But the, the other is precious port real estate. We're going to have these ships docked for 20 years, taking up real estate in ports. We obviously know we are a trading nation. We have some constraints around certain of these ports. Uh, at the moment, I think there's sufficient space, but over a 20 year period, there, there, there is uh, uh, some of that port real estate that will be ster necessarily sterilized around these ships. But ultimately it comes down to the costs and where you have a fuel source that is imported and is therefore uh, subject to the vagaries both of the gas price, the LNG price over 20 years and the vagaries of the Rand dollar exchange rate. They are obviously the main focus around the cr criticism is the cost. What is the likely outcome? Well, I think government wants to be in implementation mode. I think that's very much where they see themselves. It took us very long to update the integrated resource plan uh, when criticism was raised early, there were there, there were canaries in the in the coal mine, uh, as it were, raising concerns around the design, around the risk mitigation. Many many voices were were raised ahead of the actual bidding. There was a feeling at government that we need to implement. We've got the RP now. This is the first step. It's in, aligned with the RP. We need to get the bidding going, and we need to announce preferred bidders as quickly as possible. We have a as we know, we've had an electricity crisis now for more than uh, for more than a decade in South Africa. So th there's an implementation mentality and uh, almost a, a sort of a closed type of mentality around criticism. Just saying that yes, uh, we we know that nothing you know we can't make everyone happy all of the time, but we need to move into implementation. So government definitely wants to move ahead. And once these projects to reach financial close uh, by the latest end of July, uh, and then have this energy in the system from mid 2022, by the end of 2022, we should have some of this electricity entering the grid. So there's that side, but more and more, the, the, the sort of it's more from sort of a resignation or critical resignation, as I'd say, around the program and its design to growing anger. And this is also featuring at different levels of society. We saw the parliamentarians, the Portfolio Committee on Minerals and Resources and Energy this week, discussing the program. There were many questions raised about it uh, and they're going to continue those discussions next week. So we can see there, there's, the, there's that avenue that's opened up and uh, some activists are looking at using uh, parliament as a way of, of delaying this, this and trying to get changes made and are calling for public hearings. But if there isn't, uh, uh, if there isn't that, I think we're gonna see public pressure uh, coming up against this program. 
Uh, there's going to be a lot of focus on the environmental authorizations, especially for the power ships and the, the necessary port authorizations. Uh, that's going to be the subject, I think, of uh, activism or activists. Ultimately, this could land up in court, but that, that's too early to say whether, the, whether it will. There are key issues around the rationality of the program, you know, spending so much more than we need to for, for new electricity. So I, I'm concerned that there could be, um, that this could have knock-on effects to delaying much more rational programs, especially the next bid window of the integrated, uh, of the renewable energy RPP program, which has finally got going and we should see bids coming in later this year and we should see a, a subsequent round. So I am concerned that if there are delays around this, that it could have knock-on effects. But the design, design of this program, which people have been raising for a number of months since it was launched, is a problem. There is a rationality problem here. And uh, society is, is, is right to raise concerns. Not car power ships fault. They have just seen a program which their solution meets and they bid and they won. Uh, it's really the design that's, that's, that's where the rationality um, comes, irrationality comes in, not around the bidding. The bidding seems to have been well professionally run, but they, they, they having to bid against a set of criteria that are wrong. So I think that there is going to be growing opposition. There is definitely growing anger and I'm not too sure where it's all going to end up. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.